Hello, it's Jeffrey Christian. It's just after noon on Tuesday, the 13th of September here in New York. Uh, the August CPI figures have come out and the gold and silver prices fell sharply in line with other metals that off 140 some odd dollars at one point. Copper was off a few cents. Stock market was off. Interesting market. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about what we saw with the inflation figures today and actually what they might mean that the month to month CPI changes through August. And, and I explained in the past, that's one of the things that we like of, uh, to look at is the month to month because it shows you what's actually happening in the here and now as opposed to now relative to a year ago. Um, we saw very high inflation going into June. June, in fact, was, I think, the highest period of inflation that we've had in 40 years, uh, 1.3. It surpassed anything that we saw in uh, the second quarter of 2021 and the third quarter of 2021 when um, inflation was starting to rise. It was zero in July, and it was 0.1% in August. In July, in, in June, it was very interesting because every major component of the consumer price index was higher and sharply higher, not just food and energy, but also all of the sectors of core inflation, uh, goods and services, food, um, housing, clothing, automobiles, new automobiles, and then services were all high in June. In July, you had about half of the uh, up around modestly, like 0.4% or less. And you had about half the components uh, down modestly, about 0.4% or so. Um, and you basically had a market, an economy that seemed to be transitioning from rising inflation to uh, flat to lower inflation. Uh, in August, the data that came out today, we saw more worrisome inflation. There were some spikes in food. Uh, actually, new cars were up about 10%. That was one of the bigger increases, uh, along with transportation services, uh, which are becoming very expensive. And transportation services, new cars, and then a couple of the uh, food and energy sectors were higher in August. Uh, but basically, you're seeing somewhat lower inflation. Over the last two months, the month to month changes have been probably the lowest since the first quarter of last year. Other people like to look at the year over year CPI changes and there it's more worrisome. Inflation on a headline basis did come down, but it's still over 8%. Uh, it's pretty high, uh, but you have now seen two months of uh, co uh, consecutive declines in the year over year inflation. As we've explained, Part of that is mathematics, or actually it's more arithmetic than mathematics. Uh, you had higher price levels in June, July, August of 2021, and you had higher percentage increases coming out of the period that you were looking at, the summer of 21 to the summer of 2020 when the world was in economic lockdown. And now you're looking at the summer of 2022 uh, which has seen significantly slower economic activity and comparing that to the height of the recovery in the summer of 2021. So it's not surprising that you're seeing some decline in the year-over-year -year inflation figures. But we do think that that will probably continue over uh, the next several quarters unless something dramatic happens in the political realm that upsets the overall economy. On a core inflation level, excluding food and energy because of their volatility, uh, we've seen an increase in the year-over-year -year inflation figures. And that's the first increase since March of this year. We'd actually had four months of declines. So we're seeing signs that some of those transitory aspects that were fueling inflation are in fact transiting out of the picture some of the cyclical factors that were driving inflation higher are transiting out of the sector, but there are secular and longer term issues, and there are basic fundamental supply and demand factors 
that are more sticky and more persistent, which will keep inflation above 2% and above the levels that we've seen for most of the past 40 years. Uh, and then you have the political issues, both domestic political issues in the United States and other countries and international political issues. Uh, and any one of those things can throw a spanner in the works of, of seeing lower inflation over the next four months and into 2023. That's where we saw the data come out today. A uh, more theoretical view or empirical view, let's look at inflation versus gold prices. And of course, you know, the relationship is not as strong as a lot of people think. And inflation today is not what it was in the 1970s. And it isn't what we saw from 1983 until 2021 when inflation was basically below 4% for most of the time and actually in a long-term decline. Uh, but despite the period of low inflation, inflation from 1982 to 2021, you saw gold prices go from $270 to $2,100. Gold was rising not because of inflation or inflation fears, but for other factors. Uh, economic factors, the currency markets, equity market uh, relative volatility, overall economic recessions and, and expansions, international factors, and supply-demand fundamentals within the gold market. So gold doesn't require high inflation to see gold prices rise, and higher inflation does not necessarily immediately equate with gold. Gold makes sense as an investment as an inflation hedge because it does help preserve buying power in the face of both inflation and deflation, or at least it has historically through the centuries. But it's not a one-for-one -one, tit for tat move. If you look at inflation, overall, since gold prices were freed to float in 1968, from 1970 till last year, the correlation in changes in inflation and real gold prices was 9%, which is not a clear. And if you look at it from 2008 to 2021, after the global financial crisis, after the Great Recession, after fundamental changes in the way ec economies operate and in the way monetary policy interacts with general economic trends, you saw negative 9%. That's that period of time when gold prices were rising sharply and inflation was trickling down lower. So it's not a lockstep. Just because inflation rises, you shouldn't expect gold prices to rise. Just because gold prices are falling, you don't expect inflation to fall. Uh, the relationship is much more loose than that. And it's a general thing. It makes sense to have gold in your portfolio as an inflation hedge, as a currency hedge, as a portfolio diversifier, as a safe haven, as a form of savings, and as a commodity. But you don't necessarily look for gold to move lockstep with inflation in the dollar and the stock market and the bond market. The value of gold is that it does not move lockstep with other assets like stocks and bonds. So you have a smoother uh, overall uh, value in your portfolio. You've diversified your assets. That's all I have for today. I was going to keep it short and, fo and focus on the here and now. Uh, you can go to our website and, and re get various free reads. You can go to YouTube and see our past videos. Uh, we have some interesting programs that we're rolling out in the future, and I'm looking forward to telling you about them as we develop them. Take care. Be good, stay clean, take care of people around you, and take care of yourself right now. Take care.